Hello, welcome to The Ashley Show. It's December, the month where most cultures have their biggest celebrations of the year. Make a sound effect. <laughs> but you! I'm the kind of girl that likes to do everything every year. I just like to squeeze the fun into every moment. But this year, I'm okay with staying at home, staying away from other people, and just admitting defeat. Because <laughs> I am still obsessing over the book series I started reading in October called Feed, and I just finished the fourth one, Feedback. Um, so I haven't had any time to read the books I wanted to in November. So check out my November video for that list. I'll be catching up on those. So let me know what you'd recommend for people to read this time of year. I usually don't stick to just Christmas, but more like winter season things. Um, but honestly, my recommendations for other people to read might be The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, or its sequel, <laughs> Everything is Fucked, a book about hope. And there's Notes on a Nervous Planet, or by the same author as Girl, Wash Your Face, there's Girl, Stop Apologizing, and Everything is Figureoutable. There are so many good books out there just waiting to be read. So join me on the Goodreads app. It's a social network for book lovers, and it makes reading as an adult really fun. You can set a yearly reading goal. You can see what your friends are reading, what they have read, and when you search um, for books in the app, their reviews will pop up first, which I find very fun and helpful. Um, but I know this time of year is all about movies. My favorites being Elf, Polar Express, and the lesser known, Unaccompanied Minors. So this is a movie about kids that get trapped in an airport on Christmas. They're all from different backgrounds, different personalities. It's very funny because it's a kid's movie, but I love watching it every year. And anything with a good soundtrack will always catch my eye and make me want to watch it. Like this year, I'm looking forward to watching Happy Feet. I think we all need more joy and happy moments in our lives right now. <laughs> but I do want to remind you of some not-so-new movies you can find on Netflix and Hulu right now. Um, so The Christmas Chronicles. I watched that last year. There's a sequel coming out I saw, and it just seems like a Christmas classic without the old graphics and old cinematography of the Santa Claus movies. Um, and Holiday Calendar. Now this one might be leaning towards cheesy because it was a gift of an advent calendar and the girl opens the windows each day and like things happen and I don't even remember how it ends. <laughs> but there's also Claws which is animated. I absolutely adored it. And there's also the animated Grinch, right? And I really like that one. I mean, he's not as sassy as the Grinch you'll meet if you go to the Universal theme parks, but you really shouldn't be going there this year. I know it's the busiest time at the theme parks during the holidays, but come on. Stay home and watch this movie online and don't die. And so another one that you will not be able to avoid the advertising for on Netflix is The Princess Switch because there's a sequel coming out. And I did watch the first one last year. While it's kind of cheesy, it just had, like, so much nostalgia in Vanessa Hutchins from High School Musical playing two different characters, kind of like Lindsay Lohan does in The Parent Trap, that I really enjoyed it, but my boyfriend did not. And hey, if the person in your life doesn't want to watch cheesy movies with you, then you can just watch The Girlfriends of Christmas Past by yourself and enjoy it. <laughs> But some other new ones I want to bring to your attention is Jingle Jangle. This one's about a toy maker and Holiday Rush. That one actually came out last year. I must have missed it. It's about a single dad who is a DJ at a radio station, um, but the radio station decides to cut his job. And so he's got to figure out how to take care of his four kids um, this Christmas season. So I think that will be a good one, and I'm looking forward to Holiday. Now this one is starring Emma Roberts, who you probably know from American Horror Story, but I know back from like the Nickelodeon days of Unfabulous. 
was her breakout show. And it just seems like the perfect millennial Christmas movie, <laughs> kind of with humor along the lines of Isn't It Romantic? So I'm looking forward to that. And another one that I just thought was so cute, and I just recommend watching the trailer, not even the whole movie, is Alien Xmas. It seems like something that should really just be a Pixar short because it's about these aliens that are very materialistic and they're like, Earth has all the material things, we should steal it. But the smallest alien among them gets mistaken for a toy and it's just freaking adorable. <laughs> Um, and another one I'm looking forward to is the holiday movies that made us. There was the movies that made us, and there's another one that I loved, the toys that made us. So I'll be looking forward to that. And along that kind of same documentary style is Dance Dream Hot Chocolate Nutcracker. So if you will miss going out to the theater this Christmas time, I definitely recommend watching that. It will be very cool. And another one for the Sherlock and Enola Holmes fans is The Man Who Invented Christmas. Now this one is set like 200 years ago when Charles Dickens is coming up with the story of A Christmas Carol. So I think that will be very good. But we need to take a minute to appreciate Dolly Parton. You know her as someone who has raised over millions of dollars for tons of different charities over the past 40 years. But did you know she donated over a million dollars alone to COVID-19 research? The least you could do to thank her is watch her new movie called Dolly Parton Christmas on the Square. This is full with only her original music. You can tell that's why it caught my attention. But watch the trailer if you don't think that country music will entertain you. <laughs> and on Disney Plus, we've got the Home Alone movies, one I did not get to watching to last year was Mistletones, another music movie. Um, there's also Life Sized. This is an older one where a girl receives a Barbie doll and wishes that it would be a human, you know, full size. And her wish comes true and it's just really funny. I really enjoyed that one. And so the Disney Plus Christmas movie last year to watch was Noelle. It had Anna Kendrick, it was a female empowerment movie because she was the Santa Claus child that wanted to be Santa and not her brother. Um, so I definitely meant watching that. And the one that's coming this year that I'm looking forward to is Godmothered. You know, she goes to Godmother Fairy School and she gets assigned a person to kind of take care of. And she finally finds this person almost in like an enchanted moment, but not quite as cheesy as that. And you know, like helps bring the spirit of Christmas to her and it has a good ending. Like, I mean, who doesn't love a fairy tale story? I dedicate the month of June to celebrating Disney movies and princesses in particular. So you can catch more of that uh, six months from now. <laughs> but you know, this year I am not gonna waste my time on bad cheesy Christmas movies. Like I don't have cable, I don't miss the Hallmark Channel, but I wanted to warn you guys that Netflix keeps that spirit <laughs> well and alive. Uh, movies like The Christmas Inheritance. And if you see anything with like Prince or Wish or Wedding in the title, you'll probably do yourself a favor by just skipping those. And on the other side of the scale, I don't know if you know that there are scary Christmas movies that come out. One that I actually enjoy is Krampus. I mean, it has Adam Scott. He's one of my favorite actors, but this one is not like gonna scar you for life. But there's one coming out that seems to be more like violent Joker Harley Quinn style. Once Upon a Time at Christmas. That's the movie I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, to me, real life is scary enough. I don't need it in my movies, so I'd avoid skipping that one if you feel the same. Because I think you're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of the TV shows on the streaming platforms this year. Some of my favorites are uh, Sugar Rush, The Great British Baking Show, Nailed It is my favorite. <laughs> Wrath Battle is one you have to watch. I loved it so much. Uh, it definitely gives you the inspiration you need for your holiday wrapping to come. And although it does have like a lot more drama than you typically see in like those baking competition shows, it 
wasn't catty to like turn you off. It, it did really make me like the contestants more. Um, and there's a new one coming out, The Holiday Homemaker. I know we've all been obsessed with Marie Kondo this year. We've been spending more time at home. Like, this is just the icing on the Christmas cookie. <laughs> and for more um, relationship-based ones, there's a new one coming out called Dash and Lily. That one seems really cute. Um, and Fuller House, they have a new season coming out. I have watched those and I don't like love Fuller House, but I like appreciate the 10 seasons in childhood. I spent watching the original Full House and I can watch it just for the nostalgia of having those same characters come back into a new show. And for this month's video games, if you've been playing Animal Crossing since the beginning of the year, you've gone through sunny beaches and fall leaves, but now comes winter. And I don't know what new updates might be in store, but from the old Animal Crossing games that I've played, you're going to be able to build a snowman. And unlike Harvest Moon, you won't be trapped in your house if there's a blizzard. <laughs> My other favorite game to play is Overcooked. Now, in the first one, you can uh, cook turkeys on a conveyor belt with a blowtorch. That is super fun. And in Overcooked 2, they have two different uh, winter-themed um, free seasonal updates. And you make things like hot chocolate and fruit cakes. And there's even one level where you need to be shot out of a cannon to cook and deliver your meals. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm so competitive, but these are games people will actually play with me because they also get to win. <laughs> and I really need to tell you about two games that are not new at all, but they both had recent updates, they're both winter themed, and they're amazing, you need to play them. So the first one, Project Winter. Now this is a multiplayer, up to eight people, and the reviews were just raving about how they want to get more people in the game and it's way better than Among Us. It is a game where you have two different roles. You're either the survivalist, so you need to survive this harsh winter landscape. You need to gather resources to be able to escape. Or you're the traitor. So your goal is to kill the survivalist so they don't leave, but not get killed yourself. <laughs> It just seems absolutely crazy and fun. But the other one is a single player. If you are sick of people and just want to be alone, I recommend The Long Dark. This is a survival one, also in the winter, but you do not get a map. The update includes um, a charcoal pencil, so you can take screenshots of the area around you and kind of piece them together as you're making your own map. And the update also includes uh, spray paint cans. So you can spray paint a couple different signals to yourself if you want to like point in a direction or be like, hey, danger ahead or like treasure here. I'm not sure if there's a limit on like your backpack. There probably would. And so you might need to go back to get something else. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it has an ending. It seems kind of like a never ending game, which... I love, but my boyfriend is insistent that we finish Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics. Um, so this one's from 2009 in preparation for the 2010 Vancouver Olympics and is part of the massive Wii collection that I inherited from my parents. You know, all these games that I'm like, yeah, I should play once before we uh, find it a new home. So that's what I'll be doing. And speaking of Christmas things, I wanted to share some ideas for Christmas gifts for those hard to buy people. Now, something we have the unique advantage of this year is that gifts like hand sanitizer and soap <laughs> actually make sense. So I wanted to show, share a few of the things that I've found recently. So this is from the grocery store Meyer. It's the Star Wars child or baby Yoda hand sanitizer. I think they also had some with like the people from Frozen on it. And now this one is from Aldi and it just looks adorable. The wild berry um, the smell. 
Or like Bath and Body Works is a good place to find, like if you like really scenty ones. But from Walmart, I have this foaming one in wild berry scent. Very cute. Gonna give that to my sisters. And I got this fancy ass soap from Walmart. Like how cool is that? Because I don't know what to get my sisters. Um, you know, they are both um, like college age. It's harder to get adults presents. But other things I recommend that people cannot get enough of are fuzzy blankets or heated blankets. Like I survive on heated blankets. People will never say no to a nice fuzzy blanket. And something that is in my October video that I absolutely love uh, it's great for single people or small families, these little waffle makers. The Dash brand, um, I think I got this from Target. This one is the pumpkin. So cute. And something else I recommend for the, like, young females is these leggings from Old Navy. These have lasted me a full year. There's no pilling or wear between the legs. And they have pockets. All women's clothes should have pockets. But I'm also going to recommend the, like, grocery store Meyer, like, warm leggings. These have lasted me all year. And I love to pair them under the Old Navy ones in the winter. That's what you'll see me wearing to work. <laughs> Not jeans. <laughs> so, some other recommendations I have. For older adults, they actually love pajamas. They don't often buy things for themselves. Who would have thought? And honestly, I want to show you guys Rue21 has these really cute fuzzy socks with matching ones for your dog. Now, if this isn't the perfect millennial gift, I don't know what is. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. Tell me what you're reading, watching, or playing this month in the comments, and I'd love to chat with you more on Goodreads at Ashley Kosick or Instagram at Tiny Ash Travels.